Today we're going to be talking about the best pistols in Save the World, the new best pistols in Save the World. And I'm honestly surprised that I'm even making this video because I wasn't 100% sure if I was going to remake this entire series, but some things have changed. I'm older, I'm wiser, so I'm thinking, you know what, let's get into it. As always, all the other videos will be linked in the description below. Uh, I don't know if I'll link this old pistol video, I'm not unlisting it, but this will definitely be the uh, newer updated version, even though all the recommendations in the old video are perfectly fine, I think. But let's still talk about some of the things things that I have, I've learned since then, but I am going to be recovering all the pistols just for a refresher. Now, the Storm King's Onslaught as our number one uh, topic of discussion here. Honestly, when it comes to mythic weapons, a lot of people rank the pistol as one of the lowest, but it really shouldn't be. Like, it's actually really, really strong, has one of the highest, I think it's the highest base crit chance in the entire game for ranged weapons. It is a base 25%, so I'm not even using a pistol loadout right now, and you can see them critting 53% of the time uh, at, at 345% damage. In fact, I can go to my loadout right now and see that I am actually just running my shotgun loadout from my, my previous shotgun video. Uh, that was a couple of videos now if you're recording this. I'm recording more of these uh, at, at a time, which is great. I'm glad that I'm finally pumping these out. I don't want any more one month long breaks in between these, but the Storm King's Onslaught I think everybody should know is fantastic. I'm currently running a crypt build on this, but it does go straight for the head, so you might be able to do double headshot. This is not a best perk, so what I'm saying is this weapon is fantastic. Now, the Bald Eagle is a fun one, actually, because to those of you who don't know, Magist, uh, uh, it was in my stream the other day, and he is a basically a, an epic employee who is a community manager for Save the World. He's very active in the subreddits. I show his uh, his Reddit all the time because he gives us nice little updates and, and uh, little teasers for what's coming out soon. And when he was in stream, I asked him what his favorite build was, and he admitted to using Ranger Deadeye with Bald Eagle as, with the headshot eliminations cause an explosion. So this is an epic employee favorite weapon, and uh, I honestly agree. It's really, really fun. You can see my headshot is going all the way up to nearly a quarter million, and if you are using this thing, like dual wield especially, if you're good at hitting headshots, it is a very, very fun weapon to use. It does hurt a little bit with the range drop off, but honestly, this is a legitimately strong weapon, which is a great way to uh, have a break from the norm. And that's kind of a theme with all the pistols in the game. None of these are seriously good primaries, for the most part. Like the Storm King's Onslaught is a primary. You could use the Founder's Revolt over most SMGs and actually still do really well as a teammate. But for the most part, a lot of these weapons fall short of that because it's a pistol. I don't blame Epic for making these weapons underpowered i think it's just the nature of pistols imagine every game you've ever played namely call of duty and even like csgo pistols are just pistols they are sidearms and that's exactly what they are but there are weapons like the bolt bolt which have a really good pierce can hit multiple enemies at once and with the recent buffs to affliction damage hoping that continues on to the future it can do a lot of damage to a lot of enemies and actually be really really effective now the bolt bolt fails horribly against single target enemies but like a smasher for example but against a crowd it's surprisingly strong and i highly recommend it continue Continuing on with the Pierce, the Coco 45 and the Ghost Pistol are two different weapons, but they both pierce enemies and are really, really effective. I'm not going to get too far into the Coco because it, it plays very similarly to the Bolt Bolt. Just know that it bounces around a lot and that Marshmallow can be really fun to hang around with. And the Ghost Pistol has gotten a, a massive damage buff since I've last covered it, but uh, I did do a Best Perks on it, which is a much more updated video. I'll link that down below, along with all the pistols that I've covered on my channel. If there are any Best Perks that I haven't covered and you guys want to see them, comment in the description below, LOL. Just comment down below and I, I will I'll try to get to some of those but there are some weapons that I'm, I'm not going to be covering uh, too thoroughly like the Vindertech Blaster which is a weapon that I'll get to later but I haven't extensively tested this and it could be very very strong. I know I've gotten some requests for that one. Now the Ginger Blaster is one of those pistols that could actually be a primary. It does really really good offensive damage. Uh, it can drop gumdrops so you can heal along as you go. It has a really good chance to crit. Great headshot multiplier. I think it's double and it's a very strong weapon overall but it's limited to physical and and that alone makes this weapon really tough to use in the end game because once you get against an elemental enemy, you're kind of screwed. The Haywire Storm is honestly <laughs> not a weapon I've covered and not a weapon I really intend to cover alone. In fact, it's so similar to like the Jackal and some other weapons that are like fast firing pistols like that, that I probably will cover a couple of those in one video at some point, but it was surprisingly strong. Like even blue perks, you can see that it's doing 10,000 damage, uh, you know, 70k DPS. With those crits, it's actually doing pretty well. Like it's, it's actually not that bad. So I will say that this weapon is potentially good 
good, but I, I can't seriously speak to it. Again, with the Pierce, that's very necessary for pistols because they're single shot weapons. The hot mix performs much closer to an SMG than anything else. Uh, it doesn't actually shoot fully automatic necessarily. It fires like two shots at a time, and I think you can hold down the trigger. I'm not even sure, but it'll pierce tons of enemies and actually be very, very strong. So this is a great weapon to use a crit build on just because of the fact that it shoots two shots at a time. And it's actually very strong. And once you get some enemies dancing, I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit. The Jack's Revenge is notably one of the strongest weapons in the entire game. I'm running mine double headshot with physical just so we can get a whopping 845,000 headshot damage. In fact, if I just go up to my hero loadout real quick and put on a pistol loadout, link to this in the description below because you guys might be interested in a nice pistol loadout. Uh, I guess I don't need Beetle Jest. Let's actually put on uh, Calamity and Support. I would put Calamity and Support, but she's in an expedition, so I might be not able to fill out my point here. But what I like to always show with the, the Jack's Revenge is that Headshot can get over a million, and yep, that is a sufficient amount of hero bonuses. It physically can't show the amount of digits necessary to convey just how much damage the Jack's Revenge is doing. Now, this is a victim of damage drop-off as well. You do need to be fairly close to your enemy, but a guaranteed million damage uh, is going to get my vote anytime, because those of you who have watched me play know that I keep a couple of deagles on hand at all times just for target practice. I like to hit my headshots, and uh, the Jack's Revenge is a fantastic weapon for that. You do need to reload after every single shot, but it is is, if I'm not mistaken, just under the double boiler as the hardest hitting single shot weapon in the game that's not a rocket launcher, and it actually trades blows with the Storm King's Wrath if you can get some crits going. So it's a very, very strong weapon. Krypton Pistol is more of a meme in our community. I was pressured, I was peer pressured into making a video on this, and it was honestly not as bad as I expected, but this is what I would consider to be a very average pistol, and I'm not going to be spending too much time in it than that. I am sorry, J Prime. Your movement was successful. I got my video done, but I'm not not going to lie to the viewers, this is a very average weapon, and considering that it uses energy cells, I could never recommend using it, because when you got the Haywire Storm doing just about the same amount of damage, and I haven't even maxed out the perks, and it's shooting a little faster, and it's not using energy cells, I mean, what can I say? All right, the last word is actually one of my favorite weapons in the entire game. You might not know this, I don't use it enough, but because, like I said, I'm a fairly accurate player, I used to play a lot of Battle Royale and Call of Duty in my day, so if you can hit headshots, this is a very, very strong weapon. You can fire it very quickly semi-auto if you're hip firing and then if you aim down the sights it's accurate but you're not going to shoot as fast if you can hit headshots that's a very key thing here because you'll double your damage by hitting them it is a very 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 fun weapon to use and i highly recommend it if you're looking to feel that old timey now if you don't have calamity in an expedition like i do uh she's your perfect lead because six shots and calamity buffs your first six shots it's a match made in heaven and it is a very very fun way to play the Plasmatron is a weapon that, if you're watching in the future, I would not be surprised if they move this to the SMG section, because that's essentially what it is. This is a fully auto high fire, well, high for, you know, what it is, but higher fire rate SMG pistol. It's technically a pistol, but this weapon performs 100% like a close range SMG. It has a really decent crit chance at 43%. It's hitting pretty well, uh, a crit damage of 210%, and it can also pierce enemies. On top of that, crit hits causing seven exploding projectiles, six perk, very, very good. You can get multiple six perks on this with the creating with the expanding ring of damage that actually does more damage nowadays than it used to uh upping your crit rating can be nice but again this isn't a best perks video i'm just saying there are lots of ways to make this weapon even better than it already is and it's a top contender as it stands now, the Paper Shredder is more of a meme weapon. I'm going to cover it and the Tiny Instrument in very similar ways. In fact, these two and the Freedom's Herald, which is down here, are both are all three weapons that shoot a projectile that explodes on the target. Uh, you can guide the Tiny Instrument to death. I don't even know about the Freedom's Herald, and you can't guide the Paper Shredder. So, they're very silly, meme -y weapons. Uh, I'm probably showing some gameplay now, but the videos on all three of these will, of course, be linked down below. They're very silly, very fun, surprisingly good damage. Like, you might not actually be useless in your mission, but but I'd recommend a more serious pick if you're actually trying in your mission. Now, the blaster, I said we come back around to it, and we have. Again, this is a weapon that probably needs its own video. This might be a teaser for the future, something to subscribe for if you're looking forward to it. It is a weapon that got a really sizable damage bonus. Now, I know I haven't shown this the entire video, but there hasn't been much to show, because you can see that the pistols in the 12.0 update, which happened before my best pistols, or after my best pistols video, so this is new information in terms of this video, uh, most of the pistols didn't really get touched much like the highest up here is like the crypto got a 42 percent which wasn't enough the coco got a 30 percent and then pretty much everything was like slightly tweaked but the Vindertech Blaster got its damage almost doubled, and that is huge and significant. So this weapon is definitely a contender to be better than I know, but I can't really speak to it because I uh, don't have the experience. 
Now, the Whisper 45 is what I've always considered to be like the basic pistol. This thing is essentially the Silent Spectre in pistol form. It shoots, you know, slower, has the same crit chance. It has less damage. I think it actually does about the same damage per shot, but it's not fully automatic. So this is actually a really, really good pistol. If you're ever looking to just have a normal pistol to use, this is what I'd recommend. You can research it from the military section and it's very, very strong. And I don't really have much else to say. It's a tap firing, you know, uh, semi-auto weapon that does a good amount of damage. Now, the Zap Zap is one of those weapons that I can actually speak about because I had never played with it before recording my best pistols video last time and nowadays i could tell you it's fun it's not that serious you can do a good amount of damage you know 69,000 damage nice and it can explode on a lot of targets all at once i was surprised by how not terrible it was and then i looked at the amount of energy cells i was using and uh, kind of choked on my spit for a second there so it's uh it's a very fun weapon i know that uh some people really like it but I can't really recommend it as a serious pick, even though it's better than I might say, uh, than I might be suggesting here. Now, the Founder's Vault is probably up there with the Storm King's Onslaught for the best pistol in the game. Mine is Bright Court, don't ask. I regret it immediately, and I can't change it. So, Epic, please allow me to change this at some point. I can't put it in the collection book, because you can't put Founder's Weapons in there. And, yeah, so I'm kind of just stuck. But this is a weapon I've seen a lot of people supercharge, and I actually recommend it. It's, it's a really strong weapon. Bullets chaining gives you a lot of uh, group effect damage, and you can get a damage perk where the mag size used to be. As you can see, I haven't touched my copy in a long time, but it's a very strong weapon and really good for group damage. Like, look at this. I got a 35 mag size. I know I got a mag perk on it, but like 1.6 reloads, not that bad. And 35 is a lot. I can shoot for a long time, hitting tons of targets, dozens of targets, even with that amount of mag size and chaining to the multiple targets is really, really effective. And uh, yeah, it's a really good pistol that's capable of being a primary. And uh, it's definitely mentioned like last year, in my leveled up copies, but it's certainly not least. Now we do have some uh, secondary picks. Usually if I don't have something powered up, there's a reason for that. Basilisk is a pretty good fire rate, like decent damage pistol. I was impressed when I covered it, but it's not, you know, fast enough firing. It doesn't have enough group damage to really be super viable, and that's kind of where it's it's at. Dragon's Breath, I don't actually know that much about. I It's my understanding that most dragon weapons are pretty bad, so I've kind of just left it alone. The Judge, I've also not touched much, but I know that it's very similar to the Bald Eagle up above, so if you know anything about the Bald Eagle, if I can find it, I actually know the Falcon and the Judge are probably more similar. I apologize for the confusion there, but both of these weapons are very similar, but different in like different ways. Again, they're both kind of mediocre pistols to my understanding. If I'm wrong, I'll definitely cover these in a future video and uh, update that information. Those will all be linked below if I ever make any new videos, so you guys can check it out down in the description. Mouthpiece and Turncoat, and I don't have the Cyclops, but it might be purple. No, so the Cyclops is another pistol from the Spy Weapon set. So the Cyclops and Turncoat are both Spy Weapons, and then the Mouthpiece exists. All of these pistols were rather underwhelming. The Mouthpiece is interesting because it has those uh, Art Deco 6 perks where you can have that extra elemental damage and apparently five hits in a row can cause an explosion. I did not even know that this pistol had that. I doubt that it's going to save it. So extra area of effect damage is nice. So that small explosion could help, but I wasn't terribly impressed and maybe you'll, maybe you'll have a different experience, but I wouldn't super recommend it. Along with the turncoat and the cyclops. In fact, I uploaded both of those videos the exact same minute because I was so done with the spy weapons. I had just covered every other weapon in the set and uh, those were last for a reason. So I don't super recommend those unfortunately. Now the vacuum tube revolver is definitely one of the reasons that I'm making this video at all because of the chain lightning. I know I don't have my copy leveled up. I haven't actually used it a ton, but I have been given a copy uh, and I have tried it on stream. It's actually really good. Like I said, group damage is the main reason that a lot of pistols fall short. So if you can get the six perk where eliminating an enemy gives you a chain lightning strike, that can be really, really effective at crowd clearing and make this a very viable weapon. Even though it's energy cells, it's still worth it and I highly recommend giving it a go. Now, like I mentioned, the Jackal, or I guess the Founder's Vendetta, is technically like the Founder's version of the Jackal and the Burster. I'm going to be skipping all these weapons because I don't have much to say. And then, obviously, the Vigilante is the best pistol in the entire game. I've kind of just sort of saved it for last. I didn't want to just steal the show with everything else. But if you haven't used the Vigilante, then honestly, there's not really any reason to run any other weapon in the game. This is the best weapon in the entire game. They don't even allow you to supercharge it because it's already too overpowered. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to support my channel, feel free to use code MISTA at your checkout. It really does support me a ton. Subscribe if you're new. Follow my Twitch. Link in the description below. Uh, check out my videos linked down there as well. I posted a lot of them. These are, uh, these are a very big series for me, and they take a lot of work. So any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, have a nice day. <laughs>